وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, there is never reason to commit suicide. Nobody should kill themselves because it is prohibited. Allah says, Allah is so merciful. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا In verse number 29 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah Almighty says, don't kill yourselves because indeed Allah is very merciful upon you. You might be going through really tough days, but don't worry, take it in your stride. Remember Allah, try your best and days will change. The, the darkness will be followed by daybreak. A day will come when you will look back and tell yourself, I was so silly to even think about suicide. Look at how happy I am right now. Subhanallah. So suicide in Islam is prohibited. There is no reason in Islam that a person should actually kill himself. Allah says, don't do that. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaks of how the punishment of a person who commits suicide is. And obviously, when a person has committed suicide from the family members, a lot of people have a lot to say. Now, the family requires healing because obviously someone's just passed away. They did something that they're not supposed to have done. Now, there is an element of hope because we don't know the condition of the mind of the person at the point of the act of suicide. So if they really were in a mental state where they didn't know what they were doing, in that condition, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that the angels don't record that deed. So if they were really on that level and the angels didn't write the deed, and they did the deed, and they killed themselves. For the family who've, left, who've been left behind, can they pray for the person? The answer is obviously they can, they should, and they must. You know, the, the question is, would he, is there a chance of him going to paradise? The answer is, well, it's between him and Allah, and definitely you, you've got to pray that Allah grant him paradise. Because you don't know the condition of his mind at the exact point when he committed that act. So this, is a, this gives a lot of hope and allows for the healing of the family members of a person who's perhaps taken their lives. It also does not negate the fact that suicide is prohibited. That is totally prohibited. There's no way that we're going to say it's allowed. It's not allowed. But... If a person has done it, for the healing of the family members, we have to mention. It doesn't mean they're doomed forever. If the condition of their mind was not proper, you know they had issues. You know they were going through some tremendous things and issues. And perhaps their mind didn't take it. Maybe they had a mental condition where they didn't really know what they were doing. And so the Prophet ﷺ has told us that, رُفِعَ الْقَلَمُ عَنْ ثَلَاثٍ the pen that writes the deeds of people is lifted three times. One is when a person is asleep. Whatever you see in your dreams and so on, not written against you. If you do something while you're totally asleep, not written against you. Similarly, the one who is a child until they grow up, you know, your book of records and deeds is not even open until the day you achieve puberty. And thirdly, a person who is unwell mentally, don't know what they're doing until they become better. So those are the three. So if that is the case, and it is, then we should have a little bit of hope. We're talking of hope and healing. My beloved family members who are perhaps going through something that I've just mentioned now, I hope these words bring you a little bit of healing. Uh, Insha'Allah, we pray that Allah forgive the shortcomings of the deceased and grant the deceased paradise and Jannatul Firdaus. Allah have mercy on the deceased. So when people start saying nasty things, they don't know. They don't know the detailed rulings. They only know that, yes, it's prohibited, and we don't deny that. It is definitely prohibited. But when it's done in your own home, it's not an easy one. Sometimes you feel like you have uh, a portion of the blame, you know, that is perhaps yours. Let's understand. Pray for them. May Allah grant them goodness and jannatul firdaus. Amin.
Now, if we move further into Surah An-Nisa, Allah makes mention of many things. Uh, he speaks about how you should not look at what we've blessed others with if you want to heal and if you want uh, comfort, you want happiness, contentment, goodness, uh, hope in the hereafter, hope in goodness. Allah says, لا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض. Don't wish for that which Allah has bestowed upon some over others. You know, verse number 32 of Surah An-Nisa. Uh, people sometimes, you know, you're a male and Allah has blessed you with so much. And you're looking at others and you're telling yourself, mm -mm, I wish I had this and I wish I had that. And now you're becoming depressed and sad and you start hating and you start feeling jealous and all that. All that could have been avoided. You could have healed your heart by just being thankful to Allah for what he gave you. So that's very, very important because after that, Allah makes mention also of hasad. Hasad means uh, jealousy. And Allah says, you know what? Why be jealous of people? Allah says, are they jealous of what we have favored some over the others? You know, we've gave virtue out of our own virtue to people. Why should you be jealous of that? We gave it. If you're jealous of what Allah gave someone, you have a problem with Allah. Did you think of that? If you're jealous of what Allah gave someone, you have a problem with Allah because Allah gave it to them. So don't be jealous. So Allah says, well, do you know what? We gave the prophet Abraham kingdom and prophethood and wisdom and so much more. فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim, Him and his family. Al-Kitab, we gave him revelation. Prophethood. You know, وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا We gave them so much. And kingdom. And we gave them control. Don't be jealous of what Allah gave someone over you or over anyone else. Look at what Allah has given you and be thankful for that. You can survive, you can eat, you can drink, you can continue. It's your life. Your test is different from the tests of others. Now, sometimes we have enemies and we don't know these enemies. And uh, we should not become obsessed by thinking about who's my enemy. Maybe this guy, maybe that person. That's not good. You need to heal. The healing will come through supplication. Verse number 45 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum. Allah is the one who knows best who your enemies are. Allah knows them all. Wa kafa billahi waliyan. Allah is sufficient as a protector. Don't you believe that? Yes, I do. Wa kafa billahi nasira. Allah is the best disposer of affairs. Don't you believe that? Yes, I do. So in that case, leave it to Allah. That's a supplication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, it's mentioned in the Quran and it would be a merit for us to repeat that with conviction that Allah is indeed the best disposer of affairs and protector. So in this way, Allah will grant us a beautiful healing. Now, sometimes people jump to conclusions without proper investigation. You see two people walking together and you start spreading rumors. Oh, these people are this and are that. You see someone somewhere and you think that this person is engaging in that because I saw them here. But you didn't see the act itself or you didn't see the, the thing that you're talking about. That's very dangerous. That goes back to people who like to say things and create gossip, create stories and, you know, make belief items. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us through Another verse of the Quran, and this is verse number 86 of, uh, in fact, it's a verse in Surah An-Nisa, a little bit further up, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't say to someone who gives you the salam, assalamu alaikum, this person is not a Muslim. Especially when you're traveling and you don't even know them. You don't know them. You don't know a person and they say, assalamu alaikum, and you just say to yourself, that person's not a Muslim. They showed you a sign that they're a believer. Why don't you take that sign? Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha darabtum fi sabilillah. O people, when you come out in the cause of Allah, fatabayyanu, make sure and verify thoroughly, properly. Wala taqulu liman alqa ilaykum as salama lasta mu'mina. Don't say to the one who gave you a salam, greeted you in the proper way, the Islamic way, that you're not a believer. Allah says, be careful of that. So that, that verse goes to show us how important it is not to jump to conclusions.
don't jump to conclusions. And what if someone's jumped to conclusions about me? Now what do I do? So we go back to the verse I was mentioning, 86 of Surah An-Nisa, where Allah says, وَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا When you're greeted with a greeting, reply with a better reply, or at least the same reply. Now, how do the two fit in? Because the greeting is actually a greeting of peace in Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that peace. I pray for your peace, you pray for my peace in return. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate our status. أقول قولي هذا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين